Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I am Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz hold talks in New Delhi. Prime Minister says the youth and the future have been given the most importance in the Union Budget 2023-24. Campaigning for assembly polls in Meghalaya and Nagaland to end this evening. European Union agreed to a new round of sanctions against Russia on the first anniversary of Russia-Ukraine conflict. And in tennis, Indian pair of Anirudh Chandrasekhar and N. Vijay Sundar Prashant to play against the Taiwanese-Korean pair of Y. Su and Y. Chung today in the doubles final of Bangalore Open ATP Challenger Tournament. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said India is encouraged by Germany's interest in opportunities arising out of Make in India and Atmanirbhar Bharat. In his press statement after holding talks with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in New Delhi, Mr. Modi said Chancellor Scholz understands the many possibilities of India-German ties. He said they discussed the issues of mutual interest. विश्वविद्यालय दोनों देशों की जनता के लिए तो लाभकारी है ही आज के तनावग्रस्त विश्व में इससे एक सकारात्मक संदेश भी जाता है The leaders reviewed progress on key outcomes of the 6th intergovernmental consultation held in May last year to discuss ways to strengthen defense and economic cooperation enhance talent mobility and widen science and technology collaboration This is the fourth time that the two leaders met in the span of a year underscoring the mutual commitment to growth of the Indo-German partnership. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz arrived in New Delhi this morning on a two-day visit to India. He is accompanied by senior officials and a high-powered business delegation. He was accorded a ceremonial welcome at the forecourt of Rashtrapati Bhavan. The two leaders also interacted with CEOs and business leaders of both sides. Chancellor Scholz will call on President Draupadi Murmu. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said that the youth and the future have been given the most importance in the Union Budget 2023-24. Addressing the post-budget webinar on harnessing youth power, skilling and education this morning, Mr. Modi said, this budget focuses on and builds the foundation for a practical and industry-oriented education system. Skill and education are the most important tools of the country. The most important tools of the country are the most important tools of the country. देश की अमृत यात्रा का नेतृत्व हमारे युवा ही कर रहे हैं इसलिए अमृत काल के इस प्रथम बजट में युवाओं को और उनके भविष्य को सबसे ज्यादा अहमियत दी गई है ही पॉइंटेड आउट दैट एजुकेशन सेक्टर हैज बीन अ विक्टिम ऑफ रिजिडिटी एंड हिज गवर्नमेंट इज ट्राई टू चेंज इट ही एडेड दैट हिज गवर्नमेंट रीओरिएंटेड एजुकेशन एंड स्केलिंग अकॉर्डिंग टू द एप्टीट्यूड ऑफ द यूथ एंड द डिमांड्स ऑफ द कमिंग कमिंग टाइम्स The Prime Minister said new technology is helping to build new age classrooms. He stressed that the role of teachers is not limited to the classroom and the world is at the disposal due to technology. He highlighted that there are many digital and technological initiatives in India today to strengthen universities. He added that such futuristic steps will transform knowledge, skills and research and development. आज देश में ऐसे अनेक डिजिटल और टेक्नोलॉजी आधारित इनिशिएटिव चल रहे हैं इन सारे इनिशिएटिव्स को नेशनल डिजिटल यूनिवर्सिटीज है और बल मिलेगा ऐसे फ्यूचरिस्टिक कदम हमारी शिक्षा हमारी स्किल और हमारे ज्ञान विज्ञान के पूरे स्पेस को बदलने वाले हैं अब हमारे टीचर्स की भूमिका सिर्फ क्लासरूम तक सीमित नहीं रहेगी अब हमारे टीचर्स के लिए पूरा देश पूरी दुनिया ही एक क्लासरूम की भांति होगा प्राइम मिनिस्टर एम्फोसाइज द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट इज फोकस ऑन इंटर्नशिप्स एंड अप्रेंटिसशिप्स टू गिव यूथ एक्सपोजर आउटसाइड द क्लासरूम 
He said internship culture should be expanded as apprenticeship will help students to become future ready. He further stated that his government is encouraging apprenticeship through stipends and by building a conducive environment that will help industries to recognize the best skilled workforce. With the public poll campaigning for assembly elections in Meghalaya ending in a few hours from now, political parties are racing against time to organize programs to connect with the electors to garner support for the candidates. All the major parties have been making arrangements to end the high-pitched election campaigning on a high note. The poll campaign will end at 4 p.m. today. More from a correspondent. A total 369 candidates, including 36 women and their supporters, held a high-voltage campaign for the past about a month in Meghalaya. The state witnessed public meetings, mega rallies, road shows, besides door-to-door campaign, along with the distinctive Meghalaya music and songs to garner electorate support. The star-studded campaign has seen several top leaders of various political parties, including BJP senior leader and Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chief Minister of Assam Dr. Himanta Biswa Sharma and his West Bengal counterpart Mamata Banerjee among others. Several parliament members of different parties also descended to Meghalaya in support of their party candidates. With public poll campaigning coming to an end, all major parties are taking on to social media to reach out to electors. Meanwhile, dispatch of poll parties commenced for 3,419 polling stations in 59 assembly constituencies. The first poll party will leave for Rangcheng polling station as it needs to track 8 kilometers distance to reach from the last motorable point in South Garo Hills district. Lakshmi, AIR News, Shillong. In Nagaland, campaigning will come to an end this evening. All political parties and candidates will make last efforts to attract the voters. Over 13 lakh eligible voters will decide the fate of 183 candidates in 59 assembly constituencies of the total of 60 seats. 12 political parties from the national and the state, along with independents, are in fray. All necessary arrangements are put in place in 2,315 polling stations spread across the district of Nagaland for smooth and safe conduct of election, which is scheduled on Monday. Chief Electoral Officer Nagaland V. Sashang Shekhar said CCTV surveillance have been installed in all the critical or vulnerable polling stations across the state with either webcasting or offline videography. He said a minimum of 50% of polling stations in each district are being covered. 305 companies of Central Armed Police Force are being deployed in in the state, including Gujarat Police and Chandigarh Women Police being deployed for the election duty. Asunu Aya News, Kohima. As part of G20 Finance Ministers and Central Bank Governors meeting in Bangalore, the delegates attended the Walk the Talk policy in action session at the century-old iconic Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore today. The delegates were introduced to Indian tech innovations. The innovators interacted with the finance minister and other delegates about the technology that can bring about inclusive development at affordable rates. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate Barisu Kanada Dim Dimava Cultural Festival at Tal Kotora Stadium in New Delhi this evening. He will also address the gathering on the occasion. Barisu Kanada Dim Dimava Cultural Festival has been organized to celebrate Karnataka's culture, traditions and history. It is in line with the Prime Minister's vision of Ek Bharat, Shrest Bharat. The festival being held under the aegis of Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav will provide an opportunity to hundreds of artists to showcase Karnataka's cultural heritage through dance, music, drama and poetry. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on a Twitter handle at EIR News Alerts. Main Dr. Suruchi Bhatia आ रही हूँ कार्यक्रम अभ्यास में और हमारा विषय होगा साइकोलॉजी अर्थात मनोविज्ञान शनिवार रात को साढ़े नौ बजे एफएम गोल्ड पर सुनिएगा जरूर। President Draupadi Murmu today said the Delhi University community should feel duty bound to lead other universities in the country on parameters of excellence. She said the university should earn a place among globally comparable institutions of higher learning. President Murmu was addressing the 99th convocation of the University of Delhi. She said Delhi University reflects India in all its richness and diversity. She added that it can also be said that there is a bit of Delhi University in every area of excellence in India and abroad. The president noted that the list of illustrious alumni of the university is really long and formidable. She urged all DU students to dream big and build a new India and a new world. C 
Senior BJP leader Newland Home Minister Amit Shah today said that his party has closed the door for JDU leader and Chief Minister Nitish Kumar forever. Mr Shah said Nitish Kumar is daydreaming to become Prime Minister of the country and due to this greed he snapped relations with the previous NDA alliance in the state. The Union Home Minister Mr Shah was addressing a public meeting at Jain Sahu High School ground in Loria in West Champaran district of Bihar. Mr Shah said that at the interval of every 3 years JDU leader's dream rekindles to become PM of India. Now due to this dream Mr Kumar has again forged alliance with Congress and RJD. The BJP leader said the alliance of JDU and RJD is like a mixture of water and oil and it will never assimilate. After receiving the no objection letter from the Union Home Ministry government of Maharashtra immediately issued this notification to change the name of Aurangabad city to Chhatrapati Shambhaji Nagar and Osmanabad city to Dharashiv people of both city welcomed the decision of the union and the state government change of the name of both cities is a long time demand in chatisgarh three security personnel were martyred in a maoist attack in sukma district of bastar division this morning according to a correspondent when a team of district reserve guard drg was on a search operation in the Jagargunda area an encounter took place near Kundar in the exchange of fire three jawans lost their lives addition forces have been rushed to the spot Union law minister Kiran Rijiju has said that the government is constantly working to develop a dynamic legal system in the country inaugurating the conference organized by the law commission of India in Udaipur this morning Mr Rijiju said that the government is working to remove such old laws which are a burden on the public After 2014 1486 old laws have been removed till now. Union Education Minister Dharminder Pradhan will inaugurate the New Delhi World Book Fair today. The 9 day fair will be held at Pragati Maidan. Several literary and cultural activities focusing on the theme Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav will be organized during the fair. The European Union agreed to a new round of sanctions against Russia yesterday on the first anniversary of the Russia Ukraine conflict. The package is the 10th to be adopted by the EU member states. The EU diplomats had agreed on nearly all points of the new proposed sanctions. Sweden, which took over the rotating presidency of the Council of the EU at the beginning of the year, said the new measures targeted restricted measures against individuals and entities supporting the war. The US also announced yesterday it was sanctioning hundreds of Russian firms, banks, manufacturers and individuals specifically targeting entities that help Russia evade sanctions on the one year anniversary of Russia's full scale invasion of Ukraine the metals and mining sector in Russia along with arms dealers technology enterprises and weapons manufacturers are specifically targeted a dozen financial institutions including Russia's largest non state public bank importers of microelectronics and producers of carbon fiber a key component in the defense systems to all hit with sanctions The death toll across Turkey and Syria following catastrophic earthquake has mounted to over 50,000. According to the latest figures from both countries, in Turkey, 44,218 people killed, while the latest announced death toll in Syria was 5,914. In tennis, Indian pair of Anirudh Chandrasekhar and N Vijay Sundar Prashant stormed into the doubles final in the Bangalore Open ATP Challenger tournament. They have defeated fourth seeded Indo-Austrian pair of Arjun Kadhe and Max Newchrist 7-6-4-6-10-2 at the KS LTA Stadium yesterday. Andru Chandrasekhar and N Vijay Sundar Prashant are the only Indians remaining in the tournament. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz holding talks in New Delhi. Prime Minister says the youth and the future have been given. The most important the union budget 2023-24 campaigning for assembly polls in Meghalaya and Nagaland to end this evening European Union agreed to a new round of sanctions against Russia on the first anniversary of the Russia Ukraine conflict and in tennis Indian pair of Anirudh Chandrasekhar and N Vijay Sundar Prashant to play against the Taiwanese Korean pair of Wai Su and Wai Chung today in the doubles final of the Bangalore Open ATP Challenger tournament and with that we end the midday news